Hello viewers, I'm SB, and welcome to the Humankind Victor Open Dev period. Uh, if you're not familiar with Amplitude's Open Dev program, uh, this is basically a semi-open beta for their upcoming 4X game, Humankind, uh, which I believe is due out in late August at this point, um, because Amplitude has always been very eager to include the community in sort of the design and development direction of the game. Um, obviously, at this point, we're talking mostly about, like, balance tweaks and stuff. The direction of things overall is, is pretty set, because, again, like, we're pretty close to release. Um, but if you're, if you're familiar with the previous Lucy open dev, uh, either from playing it yourself or, you know, watching it on this channel or whatever, this is going to be quite similar. We're going to start at the beginning of a game of Humankind. We're going to play through the first four eras, I believe, 150 turns again. Uh, but, of course, it's a new map, and there are a whole bunch of balance updates from last time based on the feedback that players gave. I have not looked at a big list of those or anything. I figured we just sort of feel them out as we, uh, as we work through this together. So, um, there is a difficulty thing. I don't know if this actually works yet. I, it probably does, right? Otherwise, it wouldn't be on this screen. Let's just turn the difficulty up and, uh, and play some 4X games, shall we? Now, last time, we went for a very heavy agrarian focus um, in, the, in the Lucy Open Dev, and I still think that that's a good play, just in a broad... You're never going to play a 4X game where it's a bad idea to focus on your population count. But we're going to try to take a different aim a little bit here. Uh, they Amplitude emphasized in the materials for this that they're really trying to make naval... Uh, the, this, this map is designed to have a little bit more of a naval focus, so I'm thinking maybe we'll aim for a little bit more of, like an expansionist thing. Um, I don't know. We'll, we'll see We'll see what the map yields, but I'm going to try to steer away from the strategy that we used last time just to, to get some feel for some more of the systems. Because honestly, I don't necessarily feel like I got everything that was going on uh, in that last game. It, it, it behooves us to sort of feel out the edges of the system. All right. Welcome to Humankind. Hey, look, it's a peaceful animal. I, ha I probably have really bad news for that peaceful animal. Uh, so... Here's the deal with Humankind. The game is played over a series of eras. In the final game, obviously, it will be uh, it will be more than are here. Uh, but the goal of the game is to accumulate as much fame as possible. In each era, you have the ability to get some stars, and each star you earn gives you some fame. At the end of the game, end of the 150 turns for us, whoever has the most fame wins. There's sort of only one victory condition, which is kind of unusual for a 4X game. But the reason it works here is because there are so many different ways to approach that victory condition. And you'll see a lot more of that once we move into the first proper era. Right now we're in the Neolithic, which is sort of like era zero. Uh, and we have to move into the first civilization era by accumulating one star. So we either need to get to five population and or units, or discover enough curiosities to accrue ten science... Uh, or hunt a total of three animal uh, units. It's also worth noting, this one will uh, unlock an extra legacy trait for us. That's interesting. So that'll be a, uh, a positive trait that will give us some kind of bonus throughout the entire rest of the game. Well, I mean, obviously I want to do that. Okay, we're going we're gonna to try that. We're going to see if we can pull that off. So, here is our one unit for the moment. Uh, over here we have an animal lair. Uh, ransack the lair to gain a large amount of food and prevent animals from spawning in the area. I sort of don't want to prevent animals from spawning in the area because hunting is worth food and stuff. But, you know, if this is a large enough amount of food, I'm sure it's worth it. Uh, but what we're going to do right now is just move up to here. Where is the... let me turn on the grid. I like to see the hexes, personally. Uh, okay, so there's some food down here. Let's head for this food up here because obviously then we can still go after that deer as well. We found 10 food worth of nuts. Okay. So you can see as we accumulate food, uh, we can spawn new units. The next unit in will be another tribe, which has 10 combat strength and 4 movement. Uh, so let's go get some more food, shall we? I think we can take a deer. Wow, actually, kind of just barely, though. So we have our 10 combat strength versus the deer's 8 combat strength. Let's just go ahead and run this battle manually. Uh, there is a there is a quickly auto-resolve it for me button, but that's that's not how we do things. Uh, so here in the deployment phase, we can just put our unit anywhere we want. I mean, I just want to be on the high ground, right? I think we're fine where we are. 
Okay, so because we're the attacker, we get to go first. If we attack this deer right here, you can see we get a four point bonus because we are attacking from a tile to a lower tile, uh, which means we are going to absolutely rock this deer's world. My apologies in advance, deer. Also, I should say I have the animations on real fast. It doesn't have to look like this. <laughs> but yeah, easy enough. Like We get that one big attack off and all of a sudden the deer is wounded and it's not fighting as well and it's pretty easy to push through from there. So we got five food and five influence. Uh, I don't think we use influence for anything during the Neolithic. We're just going to bank this for when we have cities and stuff. Uh, and we did, in fact, do the thing. So our unit took some damage, some fairly large amount of damage, but uh, we will heal slowly over time. And with that, we have run out of movement points, so we are we are all done. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Their status just updated. Uh-oh. World Deed locked. The wonderful Dunakil Desert. Oh, oh, oh. Right. World Deeds. Let's talk about that real quick. Uh, <clears throat> there are a whole bunch of things in the game that only one Empire can do. Uh, one of the other players discovered one of these natural wonders of the world, and so they have gained 50 fame. Uh, there are other other wonders of the world around here, obviously, and then there's lots of other things like be the first player to build a holy site, or be the first player to complete a symposium. Uh, and you can see the fame reward for each of these. Uh, hopefully we'll get some of these. That would be, <laughs> that would be cool. I, I don't know if I made it clear to you that fame is good. It'd be nice to have some fame. Uh, so I want to clear out the sanctuary for the food, but we should probably do some other stuff first because we are very wounded. So let's just get the high ground over here and see what we can see. And what we can see is a lot of territory, but sadly not a lot of stuff to loot. Uh, we have two movement left. Let's let's try that again. Okay, we're not we're not quite going to make it to the high ground over here, but we can at least move in this direction. Oh, there's science on that high ground, in fact. Okay, and you can see the heal is uh, the heal is pretty rapid. Okay, so we got ourselves an ancient encampment which had a single point of science in it. That is a shame. Uh, crossing rivers eats up all it, it eats up all of your movement to move onto a river tile, and then once you're on the river tile, you can move off of it relatively easy, uh, relatively easily. But you can also just move along the river, and if you follow the river, your movement is actually much cheaper. Um, so. I do think we should go back and, and ransack the sanctuary, though. Hopefully it'll spawn another animal right before we do. That'd be very convenient. Aha! Uh -huh. Ask and you shall receive. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, it's a pair of deer. Will they work together? Like, let's attack one of them from the high ground, right? It looks like no, they will, they will not work together. These deer don't know each other. Oh, the deer deployed away from the high ground because he wants to live. Um, you know what? I'm going to try something here. What if we just pass the turn? Yeah, hold position. There's no reason... Okay, I was going to say, there's no reason that we should expect the deer to attack us, but it might, and if it does, it will do so at a significant disadvantage because we have the high ground and we're defending. Uh, and now with it wounded and us still having the high ground advantage, obviously this will go down pretty quickly. Yeah, it only did seven damage on its counterattack. Okay, well, more food. More influence, and because we hit a food threshold, we got another full-strength tribe unit to spawn in. Uh, am I allowed to attack again? I sure am. Okay. So, let's swap these two. I want to put the injured unit in a place where it is not easily available to our enemy. Actually, you know what I might do is... Let's put you back here and you up here. We'll take the highest high ground. Uh, the attacker deploys before the defender, so we don't actually know exactly what he's going to do. Okay, he he just stood right there in probably the worst possible place. Listen, he's a deer. They're not like tactical geniuses. Uh, and you maybe maybe actually just sit here and be be chill. Let the let the healthy guys handle this. This is a battle that I definitely would not have wanted to auto resolve because I feel like in a lot of games. If you do an auto-resolve with an injured unit, the uh, the AI uses your injured unit in an irresponsible fashion. Okay, so we have earned an era star. 
Remind me later. Hold on. Let's talk about this. So we've unlocked one of our stars. We got some fame for doing so. Uh, we are currently the fame leader as we are the only player with a star. Although that, that person who got the natural wonder is doing okay. Uh, now we can move up to the next era. We don't have to. But we can. When we move up to the next era, we will select a civilization. And a civilization is made up of a bunch of different parts. It's fine. We got it. Uh, so you can see a culture is made of an affinity icon. The game really wants us to notice. Uh, so the affinity tells you sort of a general idea of this, uh, of this culture's direction, but also which kinds of stars this culture gets extra fame from acquiring. When we move up into the next era, you'll see there are seven different kinds of stars. Each one of those has an affinity linked to it, and you know different civilizations may have may have any of the seven affinities. Uh, so the Assyrians are very focused on expansion, getting more territories. That's the thing that I I said we were probably interested in getting into. Boy, there sure are a lot of tooltips. It's a complicated game, but but I, but I want to explain it. <laughs> All right, so. You get your affinity. This tells you what kind of stars you get bonus fame for acquiring. You also get what's called a legacy trait. Your legacy trait will be held on to your... your uh, you will hold on to all of your legacy traits throughout the game. Even after you have transferred into the next era and picked up a new culture, uh, you will maintain your old culture's legacy traits. Uh, so over the course of a, a full game, I believe there are seven eras, you will end up with seven of these. Uh, then each culture has an emblematic district, uh, and an emblematic unit. These you can only build when you actually are that culture. When we move to the second era and become no longer Assyrian, we would no longer be able to build Dunu or Assyrian raiders. Uh, but any that you have built, you keep. So sometimes that'll be significant. You know, you'll, you'll really want to rush to make sure that you're building as many of your, um, your emblematic district as you can so that you can hold on to them for the future. Uh, so these, these seem to be pretty combat focused. This is a fortification, which gives plus one combat strength to the units adjacent to this district. I'm assuming it only applies to your own units adjacent to this district. Uh, and this is a place where your land units can spawn when you build more. That seems okay. Um, I, we're not even going to look at this yet. Sorry, hold on. That's what's going to happen when we move up. I'm not so worried about that just yet. We acquired our Hunter Star. I kind of want to see what happens when you get a Neolithic Legacy trait. So we're going to hold on. We're going to stay in the Neolithic era. This is maybe going to slow us down a little bit, but I really want to know. And also, you know, there, we, we can still get these stars. There's more fame to earn here. Because there are only 21 stars in each era, three stars of three stars each of seven different types, um, and there's only four eras in the game, there is sort of a limit to the amount of fame you can earn. So if you move from one era to the next before you get all of the stars, you are sort of capping the amount of fame you can get over the course of the game, which means that a more thorough player could beat you even if they're not advancing as quickly as you are. Uh, so something to keep in mind. Uh, a good reason, maybe, to do the thing that we're doing, although I don't necessarily know that it's a good idea to do it at this moment. Um, so we, the only way for us to get more science is to get more curiosities. So let's separate our people here and really just fan out. Show me what's over here. Okay, food. Food is good. Uh, and I'm going to have this unit go over here and ransack. Alright, click on the lair to do the ransacking. That'll get us another, uh, another tribe. Right, it says plus 20 food? Yeah. Alright, and that gets us closer to that population star, right? So you guys separate out over here. We'll send these units up north that way. Another big advantage of this strategy, I suppose, is that you are going to end up with a lot of knowledge of the terrain before you put down your initial city. Which, um, I think, is probably going to be really valuable in the long term. Alright, well, I mean, I see no reason not to engage the deer. Uh, it looks like we probably can't attack from this tile to that tile because of the cliff face. So, I think this is just how we'll do this from right here. 
You know what? Let me... These are the same... Um, this is the same elevation, right? Yeah. Let me start here. We'll do we'll do that thing again. It seems like the deer are very aggressive. Hmm. I'm a little concerned. Oh, this is just showing me that we're a third of the way through the battle. I thought this was a representation of our strength. This is the bar that is the representation of strength. Okay. We'll let the deer come to us because we have the superior position and they have shown that they are eager to do so. I assume that will not work as well against other players' units. Okay. Oh, hey, look. We found a horse tile. Resources for later. Uh, you guys can grab a little bit of food and then probably enter the river. And we'll just have them basically sail down the river, right? And that means that you lot can come down here away from the river. Oh, wow. Hey, that's a big animal. Um, it is peaceful. It has 13 combat strength. Probably not a good idea to engage. What is this, marble? Okay. Plus industry. So yeah, that seems like a pretty good thing to uh, to make sure we have in our empire. Got another animal sanctuary, which we might just knock over. Aha! Science. Hooray. And we discovered the breathtaking Murray River. Wait, did I? Oh, this is the... Okay, this is the Murray River. Does it have a... No, it doesn't give a label on the... Oh, no, it totally does. Yeah. Has a, has a little name. That's cool. It's just a cool river. It's not a wonder. Oh, oh, oh wait, wait, wait. Come back. Come back. I have disengaged from the river. Ooh, that one had two science in it. Okay, so they're not always one. It's not It's not that you have to find ten curiosities. Grab that. And then I guess we will turn around here. Uh, the edge pan speed is a little slow, but we can... Okay, we can click and drag. I hope this turns out to be worth the effort, um, but I would never be able to forgive myself if I didn't find out. You just... I have to know. Okay, so that one was only one. That gives us another one. Uh, y'all probably just get back in the river. Hold on, we'll do, we'll do them in a second. We know that we're going to grab these berries. That gives us another unit. And again, we'll just sort of fan out here. I guess, actually, there's not that much fanning out to do. <laughs> it looks like this comes to a point, probably. Uh, I might have I might have these ones also go down the river, then. Right, and y'all step up here. And we're in that sanctuary tile. We may as well. It's just free food. Okay, so I think we do want to get back in the river, uh, and probably the smart way to do that is to move all but one of our points of movement and then jump in the river. Because, obviously, the river the river it consumes all of the movement you have left, no matter how much it is. Alright, so we are at five of ten. Five of the ne necessary ten. We got our growth star, so that's a bunch more fame. Uh, you can see... Over time, the value of the stars decreases. Uh, stars earned earlier are, are worth more. That's going to be true in all of the eras, so it is it behooves us to, uh, to move quickly. Oh, we are the first to discover a fancy lake. Plus two industry, plus one vision range. Legend has it the lake's waters came after a people's prayers were answered following a great fire-starting earthquake. Okay, neat. Um, hmm. All right, we'll we'll send we'll send both of these tribes northward. Is it raining a little bit? Oh no, I think it's snowing. Okay, there's like actually weather effects on individual regions. That's really cool. All right, you lot, uh, come down here and jump in the river. Oh, that's yeah, that's all unscalable cliff over there. Gosh, I sure hope this turns out to be worth the effort. Um, so, yeah, head back this way. Oh, another thing spawned behind us. Wow, and that one was worth three. Okay, but we're very close. Can I not ransack? Oh, the sanctuary's in this tile. 
Yeah, I do wish that the, like, the you can see this, like, little gray filament indicating what tile this is supposed to apply to. I wish that was a little bit thicker. Uh, and then, you lot, you lot just head down the river. Uh, we can't, we can't just follow the river directly, because it goes, it runs from this mountain down a cliff face. Inconvenient. Also, urgent affairs require my attention. Aha. So... Sometimes during the game, you will cause events to occur. There are a bunch of different things that can trigger events, and you will make a choice, and they'll have some kind of long, uh, long-term long effect. In the distance, a thin cord of smoke cuts up into clear blue skies. Fire. Calling a few tribes when you run closer, the smell of cindered bark and burning pine growing stronger with each footfall. You spy dancing flames, and suddenly find yourself on the edge of a settlement on fire. Men of, many of the structures are ablaze, but even with the smoke and flames, you can see these abodes are marvels of craftsmanship. You are about to direct your men to put out the fires with loose soil, when you see short, shadowed figures running away. Youths! They could become part of your tribe if you give chase now, but that would mean losing these secrets of construction. What is your choice? Well, I mean, it feels a little bit like they might know some of the secrets, right? Uh, so we could we could chase them and recruit them, get a new a new army, or... We could modify, I assume this modifies the cost of all future city defense researches. This seems pretty good, and we do kind of have a lot of tribe people already. We already got the star and everything. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take what I think is probably a greater long-term benefit. Um, and it's worth noting that that may not be the only effect that this is going to have. Uh, some of the choices you make in events will be referenced by later events like you can you can sometimes set off a chain with a, a choice like that in a way that's hard to perceive which i actually really like i like not not necessarily knowing a hundred percent of the consequences that an action like that will have we can get some fun surprises later uh oh we found a hostile animal uh bears are predators and will attack if you come too close okay so we're about to get attacked by a bear uh, the bear has 11 combat strength, but you can see, when we mouse over it here, that uh, our other unit is within the range of that combat, and so I believe they will show up to the battle as a reinforcement. So, like, do I want to... Yeah, I think I want to engage that. Let's, uh, let's do it. Do I have to specify... Oh, maybe reinforcement doesn't happen yet. Maybe you have to have... Like a higher level of logistics. Well, whatever the case, um, we can get a little bit of a combat advantage here, obviously, by starting on the high ground. Yeah, so effectively we're 14 to 11. I love that image of the bear on the left there. It's not going to be the cleanest victory ever, but it is probably going to be a victory. Because the bear's going to have to deal with us having the high ground on each of these attacks, because there's no... Uh... There we go. He finally finally managed to find his own high ground, but I think a little bit too late, probably. That got real close, though. Well, we're accumulating lots and lots of um, influence for later. All right, back over here. Have any new ruin sites spawned? Um, the fact that new ruins spawn throughout the game is a thing that I've always really liked about uh, Amplitude's games. Please let this have two science in it. Yes. Okay, excellent. Because it keeps... It keeps... It means that moving your units around the map remains important. In a lot of games like um, Civilization... Not so much Civilization VI, because they've sort of solved this problem with the archaeology system. Um, you run around units a lot and you explore the map at first. And then once you've finished exploring, you kind of know everything about the world. And it's no longer important for you to keep units running around. Um, but I like the fact that these systems encourage you to continually explore. So, we got our era star. Let's go ahead and open up the next era then. And we'll also grab all the food and stuff. Uh, although, you know, honestly, it may have been... Oh, we found another... Another uh, world wonder. With sheer cliffs and a plateau often hidden by low-hanging clouds, the peak inspires awe to those in its foothills. That is kind of pretty. Um, what was I saying? I'm, I'm so awestruck that I can't even remember what I was doing. Uh, some more mammoths. 
Go ahead and jump in the this river over here. We'll have a little bit more of a look around. Uh, do I want to ransack? Probably, if we're going to set up a city... Well, I don't know where we're going to set up our city. It might be a good idea to wait until we have a city down to do the ransack. Oh, that's what I was going to say, because using the food to spawn more units is fine, but having the food brought back to the city to spawn more population is probably better. So let's just uh, run over here and we'll we'll see what... Oh, hey, that's like a whole player over there. Hold on, I want to I wanna look at this. Okay, so only one other player actually has a star, which is very strange. Um, <laughs> it's hard to, hard to imagine how that could be the case. Uh, so they're the only ones who have moved up into the next era then. We're, we're not really behind the times. This is, their, this is one of their units. Um, let's not fight them. I think we should not fight them. You stand at a crossroads. From many moons, the tribe has trekked the wilderness, slowly, tortuously, learning the secrets of this world, how the materials hidden in the deep places and in plain sight might be fashioned to the tribe's advantage, how the beasts and plants of the lands and seas can be most fruitfully harvest, uh, harvested, and how myths and stories can glacially but inescapably give power over our greatest enemies, other tribes. That... That's true. Traditionally, humankind's greatest problem has been humankind. Now you must decide in what domain the tribe will truly sharpen its knowledge for the ages to come. Will you be renowned as makers, farmers, or charmers? So we actually get to choose our legacy trait. Plus one industry per population on cities. Plus one food per population. Or plus one science per population. This seems like it's extremely worth it. Over the course of a long game, this is going to be a lot of extra resources. Um, I have to imagine it's it's going to be food. Mm, food and industry, I think, are both really, really strong choices. Um, let's 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 go makers. Boy, I'm so torn. Let's go makers. I'm doing makers. I've committed. Industry is very important. <laughs> food and industry are both very important. All right, let's pick ourselves a civilization. So. An important thing about the game has been taught to us by the Yellow Rose player. Uh, the faction choices, the culture choices, are exclusive. Only one player can choose each thing. So, by being slow and earning our legacy trait, we've lost access to the Olmecs. We don't get to pick the Olmecs. I think that's fine. We probably weren't going to. But, a thing to keep in mind for future eras, potentially. So, let's actually look at our choices here. Uh, we did look at the Assyrians a little bit. They're very, uh, very combat focused. It seems like maybe not our most critical move. Uh, plus two science per research technology on the capital. Their unique district gives food for each. So uh, researchers are citizens who are assigned to produce science. Each of your each citizen in each city will be assigned to a particular resource. Uh, so researchers are the science, the science guys, and plus food, plus food from people who are doing science is a good way to allow you to do science without starving out your people. Uh, plus one industry on districts producing industry. Over the course of a long game, that's going to end up applying to a lot of districts. Uh, the pyramid gives influence in industry and additional industry from maker qu makers quarters nearby, and plus one slot to assign a citizen to make industry. Which is a very important thing. And their unique unit is a chariot archer that can perform a full move after making an attack. That's very annoying to deal with in combat. I actually like that a lot. Uh, the Harappans are the ones that we played in the last game, so we will not be picking them for that reason. But I think they're really good. They're, they're very powerful. It's just like a lot of food early on. Uh, the Hittites just get plus one combat strength forever. Uh, in a lot of 4X style games, a plus a permanent plus one combat strength bonus would maybe not be a big deal uh, because of the way that the numbers scale up over the long game. But in Humankind, combat strength values are clamped pretty tightly. It will usually be the case over the ages that you know you're not more than a few points off of anything that you're fighting against. And with the way they scale the values, one point of combat strength ends up mattering a lot. Uh, the Awari automatically upgrades any regular outpost. 
Okay, that's interesting. So they just have this this thing that completely replaces outposts. That's kind of cool. And can let you spawn uh, spawn land units out of it. Uh, so it would be actually, with them, it would be very easy to defend a large empire that you've sort of staked out but haven't yet had the resources to turn into cities, which is kind of a cool trait for an early game culture to have. And then the Gigir is... Targeted unit can either move or attack next turn, but not both. Oh, that is a cool trait. Unfortunately, this unit does require uh, both horses and, I think that's copper, to be built. And we, I don't think we know where there is copper, so I'm a little reluctant to pick a civilization who has an emblematic unit that requires it. The Mycenaeans modify the cost of their units, so all of their units are cheaper, and they get experience when they create units. That's cool. Your units spawn in with some combat experience. I'm still not 100% sure what the benefit uh, exactly of leveling up is. Uh, I, it's more combat strength, but I don't know exactly how much. The Cyclopean Fortress gives you some fortification, plus two combat strength for units adjacent to the district, and you can spawn them here, and increases the movement point cost of tiles within a range of one for hostile armies. So if you space these out throughout your territory well, it's really, really hard for enemies to move in on you before you have time to react. That definitely is valuable if you have a hostile neighbor. The Nubians produce lots of money. Money on all resource deposits. That's compelling, because we do know where there are a lot of resource deposits. The Pyramids give industry and money and more money for adjacent industry stuff, so they, they compel you to build more industry stuff. And they have a ranged unit. Ranged emblematic units are always really good. Can shoot over obstacles without penalties. That's cool. Uh, 18 combat strength. How does that compare to, say, the other ranged units that we're seeing? So these have 24 combat strength to start with. Okay, interesting. Uh, what about the Phoenicians? Okay, anything you can build, you can buy out with gold a little bit cheaper. Plus two money per adjacent coastal water. Uh, we might be settling on the coast. I don't actually know where we're going to put down our city yet. And they have a boat, of course. This is damaged by consecutive turns spent in deep water, which is true of all early game naval units, I believe. Uh, and then the Zhou here have the, uh, the influence um, affinity. Oh, right. I forgot. Affinities, in addition to telling you which stars you get bonus fame for, have abilities associated with them. Okay, we'll, we'll go back and look at the affinities in a second here. Uh, so they get plus two stability on all of their districts. Stability is an important thing for making sure that your population doesn't, you know, rebel and march you out of the civilization on a rail. Uh, they build a thing that gives plus stability and science, plus additional science for adjacent mountains. And we do, we have seen a couple of mountains, so that could be good. And their emblematic unit is a horse-toed vehicle carrying a crew of two. Interesting. Bonus combat strength when stability is high, so very stability-focused. All right, what are the abilities associated with each of these? Uh, influence Bomb. Instantly convert a territory to your influence regardless of values. Okay, that's interesting. And Tourism Yields. Increase economy gains from influence control by 100% for several turns. I don't exactly know what the economy gains from influence control over an area are, so it's hard for me to judge the value of that. Unfo unfortunately, we are being held back a little bit by my ignorance here. Um, so, merchant affinities get double money when selling resources and pay half cost when buying resources. Any resource you buy via trade can be repurchased by other empires. Okay, so we can buy a thing to resell it at a premium. That's cool. Uh, what about these ones? Militarists have the ability to raise militia in their cities. These armies can be used to attack or defend and can move on the map. They just cost population, which is like a pretty valuable resource, if we're being honest. Uh, the agrarians, of course, can produce lots of population and can draw population from other players' cities, which is very powerful. Builders can set cities into industry mode, turning all money and science into industry for at least five turns. I, I think you, you toggle it on, and then after five turns, you can turn it off whenever you want. Uh, and science lets you put cities into science mode, which is that, that the industry thing except for science instead. Okay. Hmm. 
I'm not actually sure. I, I sort of want to go Nubian, maybe. I think this is a very large amount of money. Um, it can be difficult to get established in these games. You know, if you build in a low industry area, you can find yourself just like having a really hard time constructing your initial industry buildings. And you get you end up in sort of a negative feedback loop where you are not just behind all of the other players in construction, but you are falling behind more and more. Um, and money, just buying stuff out, can really solve that problem. And this will be a pretty different direction than we went in the last game. Let's do this. All right. Uh, so we have this gameplay modifier that we will maintain forever. Uh, each culture has a different legacy trait that will add up as you progress through the eras. And of course, we have the other one that we got from uh, getting all that science. And then we have our emblematic district and unit, which is, yeah, the, like the things I said. Okay. I, I think we get it. Let's go ahead and confirm. So we will become our new culture at the end of the turn. Ah, the challenges of a young civilization. It's hard keeping up with the neighbors when they have the wheel and you don't. Humankind learns quickly that everyone contributes. If you're terrified of wild animals, you can grow lentils or catch fish. Tribes settle towns. Towns develop markets, and markets begin the exchange of goods, services, and most important, rumors and hearsay. Maybe they changed it. Maybe it's not at the end of the turn anymore. Maybe you change immediately. Oh no, it's just changing ended our turn. Okay, I, I think that's how that works now. Word of your empire has now reached the Olmex. Yes, I imagine so. So obviously, now that we're in a uh, now that we're we're in a real culture, uh, we can start to settle cities. So let's take a moment to look at our era stars. Like I said, in each era, there are twenty one stars available, uh, three stars each of seven different types, and you can see they each have a fame reward that will decrease over time, but subsequent subsequent stars of the same type have higher starting values. So like. This first uh, expansion of stars worth 100 fame, but the second one will be worth 200, and the third one will be worth 300, modified down by the amount of time that has passed since we entered the era. One of the types is worth 50% bonus fame based on your affinity. So for us, that's the earning money uh, stars, obviously. So we can get stars, and as such, fame, victory points, the only thing that truly matters, uh, by earning money, Expanding into new territories, acquiring influence, building districts, gaining population, uh, researching technologies, and, of course, destroying military units. Um, probably, it is not going to be the case that you're going to earn all 21 of the SARS in any era, but you want to grab as many as you reasonably can, because, like I said, progressing quickly into the next era is not necessarily a good way to win. So, let's talk about our initial city. We gotta we gotta build an outpost somewhere and then and then take that place over. So all of our tribes have become scouts. Uh I do believe, right? Am I right about that? Yes, I am right about that. So we have a bunch of scouts all over the place. We have a lot of interesting terrain available. Obviously, though, we want to settle in a place that is dense with luxuries. Luxuries or strategics. Oh, okay, we do have a source of uh, of copper. Because uh, that is our money-making. So, we have a lot of territories here that have two resources in them. This big territory here only has the horses. I'm inclined to say um, here is maybe good. Because we get a strategic resource so we can build some advanced military units potentially. Uh, while also having a luxury, which gives us a lot of extra population growth. Uh, everybody loves salt. And then we can expand quickly into this place with its obsidian and its marble, both of which are big industry producers. Yeah, I like that a lot, actually. So, let's turn on the resource display. Okay, as is usually the case in a 4X game, each tile produces resources. Um, if you're used to civilization, things are a little bit different here in a way that's really important to get, uh, get a hold of now. In civilization, Tiles don't provide anything by themselves. They have to be worked by a citizen. In Amplitude's games, and Humankind is no exception, any tiles that are around your city are automatically worked by the city, and then the points of population in the city just work directly on resources, producing more resources. 
So the land around your city has a slightly different value in humankind, um, and settling on a group of really powerful tiles instead of just a setting on a settling on a group of decent tiles is way better in this game than it is in Civilization, where you really in the early game want to focus on a couple of extremely powerful tiles. Uh, so, I mean, this river seems pretty great, right? There's a lot of food and a lot of industry around here. Um, that's one industry. The mountain produces three. There's some Terra Rossa here. So you can see, generally speaking, tiles prov provide about two points of resources. And then sometimes a tile will have some kind of special thing on it, like the Terra Rossa here, uh, that will increase that tremendously. Uh, yeah, I think, like, maybe right here is the spot. I want to benefit from this. I want to benefit from the river. We could settle right on the river, I suppose. But each city can only exploit tiles that are within its territory. You can see these dotted lines on the map mark out the territories. Um, so the problem with settling there is that it's at the edge of the territory. One of the tiles nearby is not, not within our land, then. I think I want to set up right right on the Terra Rosa, maybe. Well, we want to be close to the salt. Because the salt tile also has some... Yeah, let's do it like this. Let's just do it right here. Alright, so we claim an outpost. 1217 there, but we don't get the science. I like, I like the science. Yeah, I'm going to put us down right here. All right, so it'll take us two turns to build that outpost. Then we got a whole bunch of other people around here. Hold on, can we? What would it cost me to build another outpost? Is there is there a cost for that? Because I would like to grab this other region as quickly as possible. Okay, a second outpost is going to cost us influence. Fortunately, we acquired a whole lot of influence. So I wanna have control of the area up on this plateau, but obviously there's not a lot of food to be had over here. So why don't we? Settle sort of at the edge of the plateau. That way we can we can reach down into the food territory and also to the water. Potentially like do some fishing. Uh, there is another Terra Rosa tile over here. You can see all of that all of that science. Hmm. I don't exactly know where the best place to put down is. I'm gonna do it. 212. I think we, we want to optimize for food a little bit. I mean, this is 510. That's not bad. It is right at the end of the, uh, right at the edge of the area, though, at the edge of the territory, which I don't love. If we settle down here, we could get a little bit more food, but we lose a lot of industry doing that. Yeah, I'm gonna settle over here. This is partially a defensive play too. I just I want to be a little further away from yellow when I do it because I don't know how they're going to react. I would love it if if our outpost thing could go uninterrupted. Oh hey, we found where those bears are coming from. Let's go handle that, shall we? All right. If an animal guards its lair, you will have to kill it first, then ransack. No, we're good. We got him. I can outsmart a bear, probably. Gosh, I hope so. <laughs> All right, go ahead and jump in the river. And you guys, I guess just get over here. Let's let's try to pull our units together a little bit in case yellow does get aggressive with us. I would uh, want to have some kind of defense available. Okay, green has also chosen a culture. It looks like a bunch of the other players were... We're just behind us. I do wonder if the AI perhaps um, could have been offered something. Both our peoples need this. Uh, I wonder if the AI is also trying to get the legacy trait. Like, I wonder if they were all focused on doing the science thing. Uh, so they would like to trade luxury resources. They would they would like to open up the ability to trade luxury resources. I think that sounds like a great idea, personally. Glorious, glorious. Let it be so. Uh, so if we did this, we could also trade strategics, which I don't really have much interest in. I don't want to share maps with them. I don't want them to know anything about our territory yet. Would they consider a non-aggression pact? Things change, even leaders and empires. 
I Ooh, have a in exchange for, for 90... Okay, refuse. Your proposal is too much of a... It was a gutsy play on their part. All right, it is, in fact, time to found your first city. We got that, uh, we got that outpost going. Well, we almost have that outpost going. Next turn, we will have an outpost, and we can found a city. Uh, so we did, in fact, do this. What did we get for this? It's. I wish that the this tooltip was larger. A lot of the stuff, I think, in the game could be a little bit larger, but I think that may be because I, I, I play at a sort of a greater zoom level than a lot of people do. I tend to be way, way out. All right, what do we have over here? There's another river running through this territory. Uh, I guess just do this. Okay, interesting. What is that? Silk, it just gives stability. And plus one industry on maker's quarters. Okay. There's a lot of valuable stuff down here. Uh, so we don't have to stay in place in order for the outpost to, fa uh, to finish growing. Um, I don't know what I do want to do, though. I guess we could get... Wow, it is it is really awkward to get down there. I guess, yeah, there's like a whole lot of cliff here. Um, get in the river. We're, we're just going to have to cross the river and end up over here. It's going to take, a long, uh, unfortunately, a very long time to do so, despite it not being much of a distance because of the way the river and the cliff uh, are arranged. Uh, I guess you just, yeah, get over here. Get ready get ready to play a little bit of defense in case things go horribly awry, as they do tend, uh, do tend to do when I'm trying to do smart stuff, when I'm trying to be clever. All right, you guys do the thing I told you to do. All right, hopefully Yellow won't have any uh, particularly strong feelings about any of this. Alright, another player has reached an era, so... That leaves only two of them still in, in the Neolithic. I'm a little surprised, though, because I felt like we were very slow on our Neolithic era. Uh, Alright, so we have a finished outpost now. Finished outposts can be construct uh, can be built up into cities. The first one goes real fast. After that, they, they take some time. Uh, we can also move the outpost to a different tile. We can just load it all into a wheelbarrow. Apparently we invented wheelbarrows already. Well, I think we should make a city. This seems like a good place for our initial city, the city of Kerma. Uh, so, you can see up here at the top of the screen, our current outputs. Kerma is producing all of these resources. Down here, slots for our population. So, Kerma is currently exploiting, if we turn off the show all things here, uh, we can see just the values on the tiles that Kerma is exploiting. The one that it's settled on, with some bonuses for the buildings that are in the city, plus all of the tiles adjacent to it. As we build out more districts on the surrounding tiles, they'll allow us to exploit more and more tiles around them, but each district only exploits certain resources. So you can see if we built a farmer's quarter out like this, it'll get just the food that is on the surrounding tiles, uh, which means you have to be pretty smart about how you're gonna build out your districts here. Uh, also, each district that we build out lowers stability in the city. Uh, that's just a sort of a, you know, things get larger and they get more chaotic type thing. It's fine. I'm not too worried about that. We, we will deal. Uh, so if we turn full resource display back on, uh, we can build one of our marrow pyramids like down here. It'll wipe out the food on this tile, but all the tiles around this one that are currently not yet exploited only have industry and, uh, and coin on them. Uh, we can also build it here for a larger amount of industry and coin, but I sort of want to build a farmer's quarter there, I think, because like there's actually a relatively large amount of food to be gained by doing so, and food is very important early on. So right now we just have three. Our emblematic district, a farmer's quarter, and a maker's quarter. And we can make uh, we can make any number of these two. Probably we can make any number of any of the uh, any of the three of them. Uh, but obviously we also want to be building Maker's Quarters in with our Marrow Pyramids because the Pyramids get a bonus from that. Uh, okay, so building cities out is complicated. It's complicated work in this game. Also, building military units costs population. Uh, we could also just throw a little ceremony. We could just, we could just have, a, have a feast and everybody can eat well, but I think we probably ought to establish some infrastructure. Uh, and, of course, you can build stuff with industry, or you can buy stuff out with gold, and we're going to be trying to do a lot of the latter. So if we built a... Let's see, we get 
eight food up by building out this way. Yeah, this is only a gain of five food this way, huh? And you can see it it removes the... Because this district cannot exploit the industry, it effectively removes the industry from this tile. I do think we probably want to go food first and then figure out everything else later. So let's go ahead and build an extra eight points of food in this direction. That would be 110 gold to buy out, which, you know, we're working on. We'll get there. Uh, you guys, just keep looking around. Keep discovering amazing things. Sure. Get in this river. Explore along the river for a little while. Uh, you can go hunting. Yeah, I mean, that probably makes sense, right? Let's let's go get some more food. The city needs food. Uh, I probably didn't need to manually resolve this one. This is, <laughs> this is pretty straightforward. Yeah, this is fine. Okay, he chose not to deploy on the, on the low ground. Seems pretty solid, strategically. Oh, and then he ran to the... Okay, like I said, deer, not tactical masterminds. So that's a bad idea for a couple of reasons. First of all, low ground. Secondly, units fighting from a tile that has a river in it suffer a combat strength penalty, so... Yeah, deer. We gained just... Aw, oh, we gained money, not food. I guess once you are, once you are no longer in the Neolithic era, hunting is a little bit different. When you're talking about feeding a city... A deer just doesn't really put a dent in it the same way as it did when we were just like a handful of people running around. Uh, you should probably head this way. Try to keep you, you know, close so that you can help in case stuff happens. But also, we should continue to explore. Uh, down here, we're still building that outpost. Uh, you know, there is territory to the south that we do not know the meaning of yet. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and do the ransack. So I think this will just send the food back. Oh no, it'll just produce money. Well, you know what? That's also fine, actually. We could, we could really use a lot of money. Money's like food, in that we will use it to build a food building, right? We'll, we'll use it to buy out a source of food. Okay, also, research. As soon as you have a, uh, a proper empire going, once you have cities, you are doing science. So right now we are producing three science per turn, which is bad. That's a bad amount. Uh, if we learn carpentry, we can get our, our emblematic unit and also the lumber yard, which is a building that can be built inside your city, not a district, just a, an improvement to the city. Um, obviously, industry is important. But probably calendar, which allows me to um, allows me to construct granaries and also the ability to exploit luxury resources, is a pretty high priority for us, given how resource focused we are. Uh, domestication would get us horses, but we didn't actually settle in the place with the horses. I am inclined to go this way. The sooner we can exploit our resources, the sooner we can take advantage of all of our um, all of our merchant bonuses, right? All right, so we're making money, which is important for a bunch of reasons. Uh, obviously, those those merchant stars are going to be hard for us to get at the base uh, dollar output, so we're going to have to pull some stuff from somewhere. Uh, let's group up and take down this mammoth. So what is... there's Okay, there's a strategic resource in that tile, and we do not yet have the science to know what that is. All right. Uh, yeah, let's do it. So, I think I like that setup. I think that's, I mean, really, that's the only setup, I think, for us. We certainly don't want to go in the low ground. Okay, so, let's have you guys start up. We're getting a bonus from having adjacent friendly units. Uh, we want to wound this thing now, and then attack it with our unit that is going to have effectively lower combat strength. Okay, should be a pretty easy cleanup. And hunting has yielded us another 20 coins. Another another 20 money. Money is the official name of that resource. Alright, once units have, in, have uh, been a part of a battle, they cannot move anymore, even if they did have movement points left. Oh, okay. Purple is constructing in this region. That's inconvenient. 
but I guess the borders are getting drawn already. Well, let's get this 10 money before they do. Uh, you lot just keep looking around. Looks like we found another player's border. Uh, oh, there's a, is there a cliff there? Cannot be done as you don't possess a technology allowing embarkment. That doesn't seem like an embarkment issue. Off we go. It might be a I'm not allowed to cross another player's borders issue. Nope. Hmm. Yeah, weird. I don't know why, why it thinks embarkment is the problem there. It doesn't look like water to me. Alright, well I guess just get back to exploring this way. Let's, uh, let's see if we can meet the neighbors. We can't get them to buy resources from us until we've met them. Okay, so I think things are going all right. Uh, while we're building out outposts, um, oh, can we not? I thought we had the ability to to purchase the construction to speed things up with resources. Not that we would. Obviously, our money is sort of already earmarked for other things. And of course, as we build up industry in the bar here, the cost goes down because we're just buying out the remainder. So we can probably purchase this next turn, and I'm absolutely going to do that. The instant we can, uh, we, are, we are buying that out, because I want that food income. Word of your empire has now reached the Assyrians. Okay. So, hold on. We're going to press this button, for sure. I don't know what we're going to do next. This is talking to us about our affinity. In addition to enhanced money production, uh, yeah, resources we buy can be sold on. Yep. When an empire buys a traded resource from you, you will receive you will initially receive 1.5 times the cost you paid. Uh, your empire will become a very interesting ally and will enjoy a lower chance to be attacked due to your potential as a strategic commercial partner. Yeah, so it's highly valuable for us to buy resources from everybody. Any resource that we think there's even a little bit of demand for, we should buy it and be the ones who sell it. Oh, uh, don't necessarily attack there. I mean, it is an even fight, and obviously we have a little bit of tactical superiority on a mammoth. Not deep thinkers, I, th I, I believe, but also, it's a little close for me. We can we can hold off on that until we bring somebody back to, uh, to assist. So we stole their 10 money, let's get the heck out of here. Alright, next turn, the two of these together can probably take down that mammoth. Uh, you lot are just exploring. Okay. Ah, the Assyrians. Right, that makes sense. They they got word of our empire on account of we were basically in their land already. Well, hopefully they won't mind. Ah, I'm not allowed to... Sorry, I don't want to, like, move... I don't want to upset them. No, I'm not allowed to move... Okay, I'm only allowed to leave. Well, fine, then. I think I'm going to merge these two up for a little bit more safety as we're running around out here in the wilderness. Uh, you, I guess, just explore this way. It looks like the, um, looks like Yellow didn't actually claim this area. Let's go. And we don't know what Purple's deal is yet. Pur oh, well, Purple's a nomadic tribe. Are they... Is Purple one of the players? Yes, okay, that's a... That's a... Right, they're called Nomadic Tribe because they're still in the Neolithic somehow. I don't know what's going on with them. Alright, let's build something new in our city. So we have a lot more food output. Uh, so you can see it down here. Food output is high enough to support population growth. Hooray! One population every four turns at this rate. We are gaining 29% of a population point each turn. So, let's, um... Maybe do some industry stuff? Would this be a good time for some marrow pyramids? Maybe. We'd lose three food to gain nine industry over here. And also seven money. And I do, I do really want that money income. But maybe the right thing to do is to build a maker's quarter here. And then build... Well, how exactly does this work? It's three money on the pyramids for each adjacent maker's quarter. This gives plus two industry and plus two money. So really, we want, what we would like to do is build one maker's quarter and then build pyramids around it, right? Because we want more pyramids than quarters. Well, more, yeah, I think that's right. Well, I guess there's a big difference in that this creates worker slots. 
Well, this creates trader slots. So there's also that consideration. Right now, we have a base of six of each of the slots, and that... Oh, no, sorry. O, o of two. Interesting. It creates the image of many slots, but it doesn't... You don't actually have that many. Uh, so we do actually want some maker slots early on. I think let's build this first. And then we'll build... Um, we'll build some pyramids out around it. Well... But where do I want the pyramids to actually be, right? Because if we build a maker's quarter here, then we're building those pyramids out into territory that has food on it, and like a considerable amount of food. So I probably actually want to put it down here where it's not nearly as good, and then build marrow pyramids out in this area where we're not stifling the potential food growth. I don't know, it feels pretty sketchy either way, honestly. Food is so important. All right. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to build a pyramid here first. Then we'll build a maker's quarter there afterward, and then we can build more pyramids out. We don't have awesome, like, growth potential for this city, but it has a really strong start, and that's, I think, a valuable enough thing for your first one. All right, one more turn until that could potentially become a city as well. All right, we are pushing on. Oh, interesting. I guess it just shows progress on any star that you're close to. Is that the case? You know, um, we're not really that close to... <laughs> we're not really that close to that, and we're not very close to any of the others either. Alright, well, I appreciate the progress meter. Uh, so we should probably think about dealing with that mammoth. You know what? Let's, let's explore more first. Let's send these scouts out out into the unknown here. Okay, we found Yellow's territory. I want to know where my neighbors are and what their deal is. Let's get some high ground vision from over here. Okay. You should listen to this. The Assyrians would also like the ability to trade luxuries, and I am very excited about that prospect. How would you feel about a non-aggression pact? They want even more money. Okay. I mean, it makes sense. I'm just, I'm hoping that some of the AI will be as afraid of combat as I am. <laughs> we, can, we can get a nice cheap pact out of them early. Oh, sorry. You were supposed to be, you were supposed to be coming to help with this mammoth. Well, now you're going this way. We're exploring. Ooh, pearls. Interesting. Right, you guys, explore up here. We'll, we'll deal with the mammoth. We will hunt the mammoth soon. And yeah, these two, I think, are probably just mostly heading back. I guess there's a little bit of space up here to explore. Maybe maybe we'll do that. God, moving through all this forest is a real nightmare. Okay, so, now we've finished this outpost. you notice there's this, um, this link button next to it. Uh, you can link an outpost to a city... To, to have that city then, uh, like, take control of the land, that ter the territory there. And so in that way, a city can control more than one territory. I think this early on, I probably just want to have multiple cities. So what would it cost to do? Wow, that is a lot of influence. Okay. Maybe we do just make this a two-district a two city, a two-territory uh, city. How is, does that have a cost? Yes. But the resources from the outposts immediately become part of the city's yields, I believe. I'm going to do it. Okay, cultural conversion of this territory will be achieved in one turn. Oh, interesting. The Nubians have recently become the most influential in this territory, and it, it will convert in five turns. Purple better do something, I guess. It's true, I am producing influence, and they probably are not. They seem to be having a tough open. They, they're maybe not great at the game. 
Okay, so now this has become part of our city. You can see we're getting that four gold per turn on both of the resources here. So 16 money per turn now, which I'm very happy about. Uh, this is going to be kind of an expensive purchase. We'll get there. Right, you lot, get back over here. Let's merge up for the purposes of producing money out of this mammoth. Like the great Midas before us, we shall convert this mammoth into gold. Okay. We found the following curiosity. Volunteers. That is curious. Okay, so that's a warrior. That unit has 17 combat strength compared to our 13 on these other guys. Uh, you know what? Why don't you just step in here and make a single army? Uh, and we've reached... Okay, the Hittites formed a proper civilization now, so I assume... Is that... Boy, how do I open the society tab under normal circumstances? I don't actually know how that... How that works. But I kind of want to see if that influence thing is still ha potentially happening to them. Uh, there's definitely a button for this. I, kn I know it exists, and I just don't know where on account of... I'm clumsy with the UI still. Well, it's probably not terribly important. Oh, wait, it's this, right? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Interesting. I wonder what they're going to do. I don't exactly know how this mechanic works, so I don't know how they would counter us. I guess what they would do is they would make this properly part of their city, right? They would have to pay the influence cost to fold it into the city to prevent themselves from losing it. I guess we'll see if they do. All right, what's going on up here? Resources? Fun stuff? Okay, that's an interesting tile. What's going on there? Some hot springs. That is a that is an eight resource tile. Although, of course, because of the way that humankind systems work, a high resource value tile that has its resources spread over multiple different types can be difficult to get full value out of. Also, very compelling. Uh, you lot down here, I guess, have to run down a little bit. I'm not allowed to walk into your territory now that I'm acquainted with it being your territory. So, we need to keep producing influence if we want to be able to produce more outposts, which, obviously, we probably do. Probably would like more cities if we could get them. But for the moment, we just have our base income, but there, there are structures and districts that could be could be built to improve that a little bit. Now this one is... We have some pretty superior terrain available to us here, but starting up here doesn't actually help us very much because this is... We can't attack down these cliffs. I guess the plan with this would be to run over here and attack from that way. But I wonder if we might be better off just playing here. Hoping the mammoth steps there. It probably won't. There's no good reason for it to. But you could also say that about a lot of the decisions that we've seen deer make. Or do I want to just have you run over and get it? You know what? Just run over and get him. Never mind. We have enough of an advantage. We should probably just press. Alright. Little bit of cash earned. Every little bit helps. Okay, so this is cool, but not necessarily very valuable information. Uh, the Assyrians are acting a little aggressive. What's what's going on out there, buddy? So, we don't necessarily need to fight these guys, but we can. And if we do, it will give us progress toward a star, right? Obviously, we're getting uh, progress on this from just fighting the animals. But, you know, other players also count as, as military units. Gosh, we need to we need to expand. We need to, we need to do so many things. We are so far off from all of our stars. Uh, they have a little bit of an advantage right now, I guess. For the moment, I will appear as though I am just leaving. Oh, see, as we're moving out of another another unit's area of influence, it does consume a larger number of uh, movement points than usual, which is a shame. What do I want you guys to be doing right now? I guess just continuing to scout? Maybe we merge all of these units up? Let's make a scouting force that is resilient to trickery by our neighbors. 
And I say trickery, but of course I mean murder. Murdering someone's a kind of trick. It's, <laughs> it's a very serious prank that you can play on a person. Uh, yeah, okay, so there's horses in this region. You know, honestly, founding over here would not be bad. There's some pretty decent tiles. If we just put down a city right there, that's a, that's a solid initial yield. And we have the wonder. Let's see. Oh, we got a civic. Okay, we'll talk about this civic system in just a second. What would it cost to build me an outpost right now? If I wanted to put it down 20? And then it will take additional resources for us to turn the outpost into a city or to attach it to, the, to our existing city. But I think we should do it. I think this is valuable territory and it keeps purple from, like, surrounding us. Uh, they have made a demand. How dare you? I, I saw it. I saw your demand. I'll deal with it in a second. Okay, civics. So, we have gained a civic point. Uh, each of the potential civics are revealed through events that trigger on our empire, so we don't exactly even know how to open them up. But once we've opened up a choice, we can spend a civics point on it to get some bonuses. Uh, so, for example, there is a question as to what style of laws our empire uses. When we make one of these choices, it will have a an effect here, uh, as listed, and it will also affect our ideology sliders. Uh-oh, there are some problems in the tooltips of the ideology sliders. Uh, but you can see, uh, in the middle, where we are right now, we're just getting plus 20 stability on all cities. If we make choices that move our ideology toward tradition, we'll start to lose stability on our cities, but we'll gain faith. If we make decisions that move us toward a more uh, progressive way of thinking, we'll lose some stability, but we'll gain science. Uh, they've really re retooled these a little bit. That's really interesting. So are all of them, all of them are stability in the middle, and then at the edges you trade stability for other resources. Oh, that's interesting. That is not the way these used to work. Hmm. Okay, cool. So... If we go customary laws based on historical precedent and tradition, we move toward faith, and we also temporarily gain a stability bonus. Uh, or if we go for codified laws, debated, classified, and codified, uh, we move toward science output, and we lower the cost to attach outposts to cities and also to absorb... Other players' cities? I don't actually know. I don't 100% know what Absorb City refers to. I do like that, but also, that's the way we'll go if that's the choice we make, but we only have one civics point and we have two options available to us. So let's see what this one is. By what rights do we rule? Uh, if we say natural right, we get a big influence boost immediately on our main plaza. Uh, the main plaza, I think, is the name for the core district that is the center of every city, so each city would be getting this bonus. And of course, we'll move toward, uh, we'll move toward science. Uh, or we can gain a faith bonus on holy sites. I don't know if we're going to... Um, I don't know how much we're going to engage with religious stuff this game. I sort of want to do this. I think... I think, let's say, we claim inherent dominion over the land and beasts. We rule by natural right. Because more influence is going to make it easier for us to expand more quickly. And that obviously leads into stars and stuff. This is how we will spend this civics point. And that will cost us some stability, but we will gain science output. All right, you have to wait until you accrue more. Civics points are gained over time subject to empire stability. That's the core. There's an out. There's a tooltip somewhere that explains how this works. Uh, but the higher your stability is, the quicker this bar fills up, and so the quicker you can make civics decisions. Um, if empire stability is low, civics points will not accrue, and also there might be a revolution. Your people might, might take you to the guillotine. So that's not how that word's pronounced. Listen, you can't tell me how to pronounce stuff. I'm the I'm the leader. I almost said king. Do we have a king? I'm the boss of whatever our civilization is. All right, let's talk about this demand. We gotta we gotta go yell at a player. Hi. Yes. Greetings. I a crisis. Crisis is a strong word. You have created a crisis. So, they want me to give me give me that. They say we can accept and give them that, and we will gain ten war support. Our people will will be. I'll, I'll ache in for war with them, or we can refuse, and they will get 10 war support. The only options left to them will be to withdraw their demands or immediately declare war. You know what? 
I bet that right now I'm relatively military, or relatively militarily strong. We have a lot of units. They're not good units, but we have a lot of them. Purple's uh, traits are traitorous, cool-headed, and hateful. Great. What a wonderful neighbor. Oh, and they're a warlord. Okay, I Rebel refuse, Paul obviously. Too much of a ball and chain on my ambitions. Things have... They withdrew their demands, which I think was the only real play that they had. And yes, they have... They, Oh no, they have not folded this into their city. Are they still on track? They are still on track to lose that. Well, let's hope it happens. They deserve it. Uh, so, let's merge up. Feels to me like it might be a good idea to merge up. And we can just have at them here. We would totally wreck them. Yeah, I'm going to do it. Let's just, let's bully purple a little bit. Okay, so we've got a little bit of a problem here where there aren't enough spaces to deploy all of my units. Um, so, it's fine. Well, they'll spawn in over the course of the battle as soon as spaces become available because we attack through this like narrow channel. Okay, Purple has chosen to back up and take the high ground. I get it. I see what they're doing. Let's step out. Uh, if I don't leave this space open, then this unit won't spawn in. Is that how this works? Or can I move them out of it now? Oh, I can. Okay. Okay. I can't quite, sadly, I cannot quite make it to the, um, over to the high ground. Uh, this is the capture point. This is like the, the control point of the battle so that the attacker has the ability to, um, to make progress on the battle, even if the defender just runs away. Yeah, we're just going to have to move in. I am not, I am not in fact going to attack in this situation for obvious reasons. I mean, they're going to... They're going to mess us up pretty badly when they attack. I do have a little bit of support from my friendly unit there. Yeah, I'm... They can attack me. It's fine. So they're going to run down, do some work, and then we're going to get... We're not going to get up on the high ground. We can't, we can't just run around them the way I want to. Huh. So select uh, to select plus to deploy your units. What does that mean? Select okay, click this button. I see. Okay, I have to I have to click a button to get the unit to show up in combat. Uh, so we do have uh, we don't quite have higher combat strength. Their bonus is just a little bit too high. Their um their scout just has a higher combat strength than ours does. That's probably if I had to guess uh, because of the difficulty that we're playing on. But this is still a pretty even fight. Jeez, even with it being pretty even, like look at how look at how lopsided the damage is. I'm gonna hit end round again. Next turn, we're gonna take the high ground next to them. We're gonna have a stronger unit. They're gonna be wounded, and they're flanked. So, can I not? Did I? There we go. All right, and now that they're so wounded, yeah, go ahead and go ahead and get them. Wow, flanking is worth a lot, but also that's just a tough unit. So battles are only three turns uh, in the uh, in the early game, even if there are still survivors. Uh, but obviously, they have some feelings about that. They've gained some... Uh, our population's war support against them has increased. That's interesting. Uh, they have made the following demand. Pay us money. No. Despite are you joking? Good intentions... Ridiculous. Yeah, I didn't really consider the um, the deployment trouble we were going to have attacking through that that very narrow land channel. It's a good uh, a good example of why not to do things like that. Uh, you guys are making this such a nightmare for me. They're gonna box us in and have us moving real slow. We could we could have this unit come back to try to help, but unfortunately, um, units do not heal naturally outside of your territory. So I don't know that bringing back a hugely injured unit is going to give us the ability to um, to press them militarily or anything. Ah, uh, yeah, we opened up some civics by founding an empire. We have already dealt with that. And we certainly have enough money to buy this out. Let's go ahead and rush that down. So our city is now trending toward 50 stability. 
because uh, we have we have lost a lot of stability in a lot of different ways. Obviously, that's not ideal. It is going to slow down our pace towards civics. Uh, we don't really have a lot of ways of dealing with that at the moment, unfortunately. And the thing I really want to do is going to stress our stability even more. But, like, think about all the resources, though. So if we build up here... In the long term, we're losing the food up here. Right now, we're not getting this food anyway because we this territory is not exploited by a district that produces food. So part of me kind of wants to build the Maker's Quarter down here and then potentially build pyramids around it in these locations where they will not, where we will not lose food by doing so. So that we can build Farmer's Quarters up this way later and get some of this river food. So it's a little bit less good now, but it's a little bit better in the long term, maybe, to do it this way. I guess there's no chance that I would build food exploiting districts all the way over here, though. Yeah, we can build it here. That's fine. It'll get us the extra money, and that's really what we're after for the moment. Uh, okay. We do need to explore south as well. So, I kind of donked this battle over here. Let's see if we can track down that unit. It it fled. I would like to... I would like to chase it down and finish the job if we can. Oh, I think it got away. Alright. Okay, uh, we finished our research. We now have the ability to extract luxury deposits, which is going to end up resulting in a lot of additional money. So I'm very, very excited about that. Uh, irrigation just produces plus two food from each river tile in a city that has it. I don't know. I sort of think carpentry. Like, maybe maybe we need to get our archer up on account of uh, I'm harassing our neighbors and making them angry. Obviously, there's some very valuable stuff up here for us. Including a civics point. But we just... We currently don't really have the science to make that kind of move. I think let's grab carpentry. Let's get the ability to make archers. Oh, a battle is currently underway. Okay, I would like to retreat. This is bad news for us. So, when we retreat, our army gets automatically moved away, and they gain the retreating status here. Uh, if a unit has the retreating status, it cannot retreat from battle. So if they catch us again, we're dead. Hopefully they will not choose to attack us again. Hopefully they'll they'll take this as me choosing to leave their territory. I would sure love it if that happened. My population's war support against the Assyrians drops by five. Clearly, we cannot, we cannot handle them. Alright, and then we have a grievance available. Why are you here? Right? Isn't that the case? Yeah. Okay. A grievance is a cause for demands or action in response to another empire's aggressive deeds toward you, like attacking you. When a grievance is triggered, the aggrieved side's war support increases, uh, so we can try to leverage this into getting them to, to pay us money. And I'm going to go ahead and do it. Give you me dollars. Have one chance to save your oh! Skin. I'm... Okay. We can meet these demands. I am actually shocked. They gave us the money. Isn't it marvelous? You... I, I kind of can't believe... Okay, wow, that's awesome. Well, with $100, you know what we're going to do. <laughs> ah, yes, we have uh, we have the ability to build luxury deposits. I think we should probably do that. Um, and... That has a cost of 100 industry, while this is a cost of a little bit more. So actually, can we... If we move this to the top... No, we can't quite buy it out in a single turn. All right, that's fine. We'll keep, we'll keep working on this. We'll buy this out. I was kind of hoping we'd be able to just do that straight up. Alright, uh, you guys... I guess can just come down here. I don't, I don't think that needs to be guarded. So this thing is still, is still about to flip if they don't do something. I guess we'll see. Uh, and I am gonna try to make it back here if we can let's see if we can provide a little bit of relief to this army because if we can just put one more body in this fight 
Um, then maybe we can make them not attack again. If they do attack again, then I will demand more money from them, and hopefully they'll just give it to us, because they seem to be very vulnerable to that. So yeah, I'm going to enter this movement command, and then there's a, but a little button that pops up that is uh, tells your, all of your units who have standing orders to execute them, and we're just going to mash the heck out of that button at the beginning of the turn. Nope, that's not the button. Wait a minute. Uh, hmm. Maybe it doesn't appear automatically. That's how it uh, how it used to work in the uh, the other Amplitude games and stuff, and maybe we're in some trouble here. Well, let's go ahead and ask for reparations again. I demand. He's not responding immediately. Okay, they don't they don't have to respond immediately. They have ten turns. Oh wait, did I did it actually demand it? Oh, they attacked me twice. Okay. We have two standing demands up. So yeah, they did come after us again. Uh, are we allowed to retreat? Okay, I, the, I assume the retreat thing falls off at the end of the turn. So they have to attack you. They have to get you twice within the same turn for it to, for you to be destroyed by failure to retreat. And I'm sure there are things that modify that as well. Okay, well that being the case, everything's fine. We're fine. It's fine. Let's get out of here. Uh-oh. Yellow has, like, a real army. Scout riders and two warriors. Okay. Yeah, archers. We need archers. Like, soon. Probably. So right now, while this thing's still just an outpost, it's very ransackable. Which makes me a little nervous. Maybe we should... Maybe we should come back here and just make it clear to them that there will not be any of that. They're probably just looking around. But, like, but like, let's be safe. Alright. As your horizons widen, your armies grow in lockstep with your ambitions. Now with military power spread over several regiments, it is time to decide the nature of the soldiers who compose your armies. So we've gotten a new civic choice. We still don't have a point, though. Uh, so this will lower the cost of all of our units, presumably forever, by 20%, while this will just give us plus one combat strength. Uh, those are both very interesting and strong choices. Yeah, I know. I know I ran away like a great big coward. But it's only because of what a great big coward I am. You gotta understand. All right, so we are cratering stability in this city. We got to do something about that. We also have two points of population, which we should probably be placing in a more thoughtful way. So let's see, if I move this guy over to here, have they changed the way food works? They have. It looks like food food output is... Um, the way food converts to population growth is no longer stepwise, it seems. Well, that being the case, we probably do want to be very focused on food for the moment. Yeah, I... I whether or not you're agrarian, you still want to be pushing population growth. I think that's pretty important. Uh, oh, hey, minor civilization. What's up, uh, Norte Chico? The more similar your ideological uh, orientation is, the better your proximity will be. So we're very in the middle. They're all the way toward individualist and progress. So not good. Not a good level of proximity. Uh, if we let this outpost become a city, we can interact with this independent people, and we can eventually, I think, assimilate them into our empire. Or we could just go over there right now while it's still an outpost and, you know, do the other thing. Uh, not a, not a problem for the, for the current moment, though. Alright, I'm very worried about this stuff. Also, we have an indicator... Oh, they have some silver. I'm not sure what the red indicator here was. Was it just like you have demands? Because like we have a we have a little red thing. Okay, it's gone now. Uh, but we do see that they have resources, and we should probably buy those resources, right? Your diplomatic relations with this resources owner do not allow trade. Oh, wait, did we not? Silver is a luxury. Hmm. Yes, I have I have made some demands. 
It's weird that there's a graphical, like, positional indicator for those. So, hmm. Ah, there is no known path back to one of your cities. The problem here is not really diplomatic relations, because we totally do have, um, we totally do have the trade thing. It's just that we can't, we can't run that from their city to our city, because there's no connection. Okay, well that's a solvable problem, you know, eventually. So let's end the turn up here, because I really want to fold these two armies together. Let's make sure that we are traveling home a little bit stronger, because apparently it's dangerous out here, who would have thought? Oh, hey, look, it's purple. Uh, well, again, we have this, like, vastly superior position for them. Their unit is damaged, but not as damaged as I might like. And what's going on with this? Okay, it has become... We lost a lot of progress on this, and I'm not 100% sure how that works or why that happened. It's currently part of the Olmec Sphere of Influence. We've become the most influential in this territory. The territory's owner, the Hittites, have a 0% hold. So I think yellow is yellow's influence output is interfering with us. Maybe? It's not 100% clear to me how this influence conversion thing works, unfortunately. I feel like we should just bail. I think we're going to find that this is going to turn into a really ugly situation. I'm a little surprised that they're able to exert their zone of control up a cliff face that they can't um, that they can't travel over, though. Not how I would have expected that to work. Uh, so, what would it cost to turn this into a city? 160 influence. Or we could link it for 130. It feels like I probably want it to become a city. I, I want to have more cities, I think. It is going to be a tiny little city that can't grow at all, though. Well, whatever. It's not a decision we have to make right now. So, until, until though, until it is actually connected, I am a little nervous about leaving it alone. I do want to explore to the south. We'll just have one of our guys head south. The other one can stay here and play defense. Because I do not trust these guys. Okay, you're good. Why don't you just, uh, there's a button for, there's a button for skip. Yeah, stay here indefinitely. That's the one I want. You are going nowhere. And we can probably buy this out too, right? Yeah, if I do that, uh, we do have this other, re oh, right, that's not a luxury though. Oh, but I can build, I can build on top of the luxuries that are down here and being exploited. So... Just plus 2% industry, and this is plus 2 industry for each person who's assigned to work. So right now, plus 2% industry is probably like 1 industry, right? I mean, just getting more resources, obviously, is valuable. Yeah. Well, we definitely want to build all of these, I know that. So sure, buy one of them out. Okay. And now, in theory, purple can buy access to our resources if they want, and hopefully they will. Because I sure could use the money. Alright, one more point of population, and closer and closer to our uh, era star. The Assyrians are having feelings. Oh, and they're also they're doing this thing. Hmm, I don't know if that was a smart idea. I am going to demand reparations. No one abuses my people without consequences. You he... make a grave mistake. Wow, angry. He is now aggressive. Okay, I don't really know what to make of that, buddy. So, uh, a battle. He only has a single unit. It's just a full health scout, although his scouts do have 16 combat strength to our 13, so we have to we have to work together a little bit here. But I think, yeah, let's let's try it. We could run, but I'd rather kill him. Off we go. So let's see. That is not a that's not a height difference, is it? It's a little it's a little weird. Let's go. I think I put you here. And like we could try to do a flank around, maybe. Yeah, let's deploy like this. 
Oh, that is, a, yeah, that is totally a, a height difference. It's a little hard to tell. It's so gradual. But yeah, I guess there's a height difference here. And then all these tiles are the same, so. How close can you get? You can get over to here. That does not give us... Yeah, sadly that does not create the flanking bonus. But this is going to end up being such a close battle. Like, the thing is... If I do run these guys around, to, like to here, we're not actually going to get a flank setup, right? He's just going to kill that, kill my scout. I think at the moment, if we keep doing this, we'll survive, but narrowly. Yeah, I'm just going to do that. Attack with you adjacent, and then like the question is, do I want him? I, I am going to, I'm going to move this around to here. So if he wants to run up on us, he's at least fighting through. A high ground bonus. And then we'll step down to create the uh, the rear attack. There we go. Alright, population support, uh, war support against the Assyrians is increased. Uh, we can go to war without the support of the populace, but obviously they will have feelings about that in the long term. And I think we need to get home and get some healing. But hey, progress toward a star, right? Speaking of, I mean, do I think progress toward a star is enough of a good reason to just attack yellow here? How does yellow... F yellow doesn't have Greetings any particular me feelings about people. me, right? We are at peace with the Olmecs, which does not necessarily mean the same thing like here that it would in, say, civilization. Uh, they are traitorous, extroverted, and vindictive. Okay, maybe a good reason not to attack them right now for just star progress. And they are, <laughs> they're, they're ideologically, they're hipsters. Yeah, probably a good reason not to attack them right now for a little bit of star progress. Let's just head this way. We got to scout that area south of us. Uh, okay, the Olmecs are creating stuff. And I mean, now these guys don't have a superior position anymore. It would just be my full health warrior against their dude. So... I think I'm going to take it. Oh, the cowardice. The retreating. And unfortunately, that spent all of our movement. So basically what we did there was we spent our turn running them off. Which I think is fine. We're not in danger from the Olmecs because of the cliffs, so... Uh, yep. We did We did a victory. They have made a demand. Things I will well refuse it. No. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead and pursue that war support. See what happens. Uh, and we don't quite have enough money to keep buying out, but we're doing well. Like, we're, we're accumulating dollars, we're accumulating population. We don't actually change our number of turns to our next population point by moving this guy over. It doesn't change the number of turns it's going to take for us to finish the Artisan's Quarter either. I'm just going to assign him to food. Let's, let's just keep moving the surplus up. Because we are close to that star. We're totally getting there. Uh, the Hittites have withdrawn their, their demand. That's a... That's a very Hittite-focused way of describing the thing that happened there. Okay, let's focus on these scouts as we end the turn here. Because I desperately want to get them out of the position that we've gotten them into. Running. Maximum running. Set running to all of it. Alright, good scouting. The yellow guy has run off, so we probably don't need to be too stressed about the position of this hunting party anymore. Uh, you guys are definitely just continuing south. Uh, and this is the minor faction, right? I guess they're allowed to be here. It's fine. So... What do we... I don't, don't think we have a lot of interesting decisions this turn, sadly. Like, we can go ahead and buy off some of this industry, and I reckon we ought to. The faster we get these done, the, the more gold we are producing overall. Uh, and we definitely just want to keep pushing population, but we have to be a little careful about stability. So you can see there's a couple of indicators in the bar. There's this, this mark way down here. Uh, at 30%, if we drop below 30%, things will change for the worse. If we get back above 90%, things will change for the better. 
Uh, but it is sort of the case that everything between 30 and 90 is kind of the same in terms of whether or not the city is going to rebel. Obviously, um, lower values do change the rate at which we are gaining civics points. So we can kind of afford another farmer's quarter, is my point. Uh, and there is nine food to be gained by just building out in this direction. If I build up here, we gain seven at the cost of some industries. So yeah, like eventually there will probably be a, a sensible move in that way. But I just, I think we just want to build out into the big field. More population is more soldiers. And that is, I think, going to be important for us going forward. Uh, I mean, if I attack them, the same thing's going to happen, right? I can't, I can't actually make this one unit stand and fight us. They will just run. So I'm probably not actually doing anything of value. Let's just continue stepping away. There's a lot of stickiness on armies in this game. It's gonna have, I'm going to have to maybe rethink the way I'm positioning things. And you are probably at this point free to start moving again. Here, I want to go all the way up here. I want to see, see what I can see from the furthest point of the coast. And we're getting kind of close to the amount of uh, influence that we would need to flip this into a second city. We're headed in that direction. We're getting pretty close on um, the combat star too, right? Ah, and one more district gets us 94 fame from this. So you can see they're decreasing pretty slowly. Over, They are going down, but they're going down slowly. How's everybody else doing? Okay, we're getting run the heck over by, uh, by yellow, like in a way that's actually very concerning. How does yellow have four stars already? Okay, somebody's going to have to do something. Is it me? Gosh, I hope not. We might lose. It's possible. Uh, the unknown has gained renown as a merchant. What does this mean? There's, there's reputations and stuff. Huh. Okay. For, uh, for right now, just go ahead and, and close that. I acknowledge. I don't know what that means. Uh, so, right now, they are militarily superior. Thing is, I really want to explore to the south. We're, we are going down here. I'm not bringing my units back to mess with that. He's doing a really good job of just being very annoying. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to separate my scouts out into a separate army, and then I'm going to have my warriors attack here. Alright, he's going to run away, and that will leave my scouts free to continue on. We're going to make it back to friendly territory. And I guess I'm not going anywhere with these guys right now. Just, um, chill here for the turn. You lot, get home. Yeah, okay, we'll have to run through here, because, again, lots of cliffs. It's a very uneven area. The world as it ever was is divided into the rulers and the ruled. Great sprawling empires and proud independent cities. Your struggle is with other empires, but you should not forget the part these free cities can play. So we've opened up another civic by meeting these independent people. Uh, so we can try to take them on as mercenary armies, or we can lower the cost to assimilate. I am inclined to lean this way, but again, this is a thing we don't have to consider in much detail uh, until we actually have the resources to interact with them. And I guess a civics point also would be very helpful. Uh, yeah, so I guess we're done for the moment. Oh, we probably have enough money to rush this. Yeah. Get stuff done. Hooray! Aerostar. Look at that. I'm still in fifth. But I'm less in fifth. I'm, cl I'm closer to fourth than I used to be. Honestly, I'd be pretty excited if we lost. I think that would be a that would be a, a cool outcome. So we need one more population for our next star. Um, because think about all the things we'll learn, and we'll get to try again. And yeesh, we're not close to any of these though. So five territories attached to any city. So we can build some more out. I mean, we have space for outposts. We can we can outpost backward, and then sort of fold all this together. I think probably what we should do is attach this and then build a second city over here that expands northward and maybe takes over 
this territory, which I really wanted to own and was hoping we would own. Yeah, so the attached cost here is it's low hundreds, right? 130? Yeah, I think we'll take that when it becomes available. And I have no idea how long it's going to take for them to become an independent people. Maybe we should just step in and uh, interfere a little bit. We'll have a look at what that situation looks like. Oh, they made their... they did the thing. Also, we got a population star. Alright, it's time to create your religion, apparently. Pick the base of your people's beliefs. Uh, 10 faith and 10 influence on holy sites, or 10 faith, 5 influence on holy sites, and also 5 faith on holy sites. I don't really know that I want to do a whole religion thing, but I do like influence. Alright, so we earned an agrarian star. We also have spawned an event here. The Flooded Lands. An unrelenting deluge of rainfall lashes down upon the great city of Kerma and the surrounding lands. If the rains don't stop soon, the banks of the great river that threads th through the city will burst, flooding the adjacent quarters. With limited time and resources, the choices are stark. What do you do? Yeah, let's just leave it to fate. I'm sure that's going to turn out well. Uh, we can pay money to reduce the consequences. Unfortunately, we don't have a ton of money... Um, I think it will let you do this, even if you don't actually have the money. You just go into debt and can't spend for a little while. A chance of good consequences and a chance that nothing will happen. And of course here, a chance that nothing will happen. Uh, I'm gonna adapt. Let's, let's split the middle here because, like, I have a lot of things I want to do with my dollars, you know? I should say, uh, now that we have 46 money income per turn like we're gonna hit our merchant stars relatively quickly from here so we have a lot of fame coming in soon it, our, our fame situation is better than it looks it would almost have to be <laughs> all right uh so okay they eventually did just fold this into hatusa i think that's probably the right move for them all right i would still like to get over here if i can be allowed to get over here uh, we have reduced the value of harassing us, and so they have they have chilled out on that noise. You desperately need to get back into friendly territory and start healing. I wanted to make sure that I moved him first, so that these two didn't just fold into a single army. All right, you need to let, hold on a second. Let's talk about these guys because their whole their whole deal has changed now. They are peaceful, and they have a city. That's weird. That's a weird name for that tag. Uh, so. You can see now we are gaining patronage progress with them. Uh, plus three relation score from shared influence because we have we have influence bleeding over our border onto them. So over time, that'll increase. Uh, when it gets to certain thresholds, uh, we'll be able to buy their resources and they will, they will not attack you. I think they already won't attack us because they're peaceful. But you know, not all independent peoples will be peaceful. Uh, and we get their map vision. Uh, once we get past 60... Uh, their armies can be hired as mercenaries in addition to that other stuff. And then if we get past 90, we can assimilate them into our empire. Obviously, I would like to do that. So we can drop some uh, drop some money or some influence on them to increase the rate at which our relation gain uh, occurs. Right now, I'm definitely not spending influence on them, but we'll give them some money next turn. I'm totally into that. Uh, I, keep, I keep pressing escape to try to close stuff, but that is not how it works in this game. Someday I'll learn. I'll get, I'll get there eventually. Alright, so next turn we'll be able to attach this to the city. You guys just gotta keep running. I know. I know it's a long run. Oh, also, hey, look at that. A thing has spawned directly in our path. We, we actually can't even avoid it. Alright, so for the moment, I guess just do nothing. Just continue to gain. Watch all the little bars improve. The Hittites have feelings you, about your me. Empire will feed the worms. I will not pay you $100. It will not happen. Okay. You've received one or more demands. A diplomatic crisis has begun between you and your opponent, and no new trade or treaties can be negotiated until a, so a solution is found. You can accept their demands. This is not the... Um, I don't think this is the correct tooltip for this situation here. 
They've declared war on me is what happened, right? Yeah. So, here we go. This is the tooltip. A war is won by forcing your opponent to surrender. In order to do so, you need to play in a way that will bring their population's war support to zero. An empire's war support against an empire goes down when losing a battle, a city, or for being at war too long. War support goes up when winning battles, capturing cities, and ransacking trade routes. Okay. Their war support is very high. Mine, not so good. Uh, they're mad, obviously, on account of all of the things I'm always doing to them. Uh, I can offer surrender. I will need to pay suitable reparations. If we... How do we get... Okay, we have no grievance to claim. If we had a grievance, we could we could leverage it to try to get them to accept a, a neutral peace. Okay, you're at war with another empire. You can attack or be attacked in both territories, districts and harbors, and add, yeah, stuff can be ransacked. Okay. War was declared. Time for some things to change. First of all, we obviously have some military units on their way to some different places than before. Uh, you've made it far enough south that I think it makes sense for you to keep going. Just just go and go and find me some scouting opportunities. Uh, I am still going to give these guys some money. So now that hasn't given us a, a like an immediate bonus, but it has made it so every turn we are now gaining five relation instead of three. That's the thing I misunderstood last game, and I ended up going way past the uh, thresholds I needed to go to. Uh, we are going to go ahead and attach this to Kerma. Religious conversion of this territory will be achieved in four turns? Weird. Okay, so it's going to take some time to, to get done. Hi! Hi, Yellow. How's it going? News from the borders. I'm at war. That's not, that's not news. I know. I'm with you. Uh, this would be a bad attack for us. Let's just try to... If I just move over here, obviously... I don't know. I don't think they're going to attack me. I don't think it's... Never mind. They're going to attack me. So if I retreat... Is the capture point an, an indicator of the direction I'll retreat in? So let's see. It would take three turns. They get to... We both get to set up. Unfortunately, the high ground is in their deployment zone. Yeah, alright. Just retreat. Nope, I retreated in a direction that I don't understand, but I'm very happy for. Like, that's definitely the right direction to do it. Now, obviously, retreating costs us some war support, so we got to be a little bit careful. Okay, we found five dollars. <laughs> He's found five dollars on the ground. I mean, okay, I'll take it. Uh, so, we don't really have any resources left to push anything with. Yeah, we're just we're just a little at war, is all. It's fine. Yo, hey, can I tell you? I intended to make a video that was roughly one human hour in length. Uh, but Forex games, right? I, you get... I'm having a good time, if that's not clear. Let's go ahead and end the turn. We'll just, uh, we're going to two hours now. Clearly. All right, people got opinions about me. That's fine. Everybody's Everybody's got opinions. Ah, you are still... Interesting. So you're still marked as retreating, even though you have not retreated this turn. I wonder why that's the case here, but it wasn't the case with our other armies who were attacked the turn after they retreated. Okay, now we're back in friendly territory. Lovely. Uh, this value's increasing. Okay, I mean, we're friends now. Friend, friend-ish. Friendly. Friend-like. Ooh. Did I find... I wish the notification had stuck around a little bit longer. Did I find a little bit of science, or... Then it doesn't tell us exactly what the resources were. I'm assuming I found some science and not a full technology. Okay, so we just got the ability to build archers. Seems like a fine time for it. Let's learn about city defense. Seems like it might be relevant. Right, you just keep looking around. Uh, we have some battles that we got to worry about. Also, during the recent brutal battle, many soldiers sustained horrific, life-changing injuries before returning to Kerma. For some, their whole character has changed, becoming aggressive, demented, that's a harsh word, or unable to bear others' presence. 
Others suffer physical wounds, some forced to use crutches or carts to move around. Among the citizens, fear mixes with admiration as they spy them on the streets. Your lead will be vital. How do you welcome your crippled soldiers? Well, we can glorify them and gain stability for ten turns. We can exploit them, make the city awash with military patriotism, and lower the cost of, of military units. Uh, but also, these choices will affect our ideology, so that'll move our geopolitical axis toward homeland. So let's see. This side is plus food. This side is plus food per alliance, and potentially a larger number. Okay, interesting. Hmm. Well, I mean, in the short term, I think the patriotic benefit is better in the short term, and I don't really want the social access to move back toward tradition. I don't think that's what we're doing here. So we're going to uh, exploit them, but I do feel bad about it. <laughs> I feel like this is sort of immoral. Okay, so... Uh, armies that are not yet in combat positions. All right. We're going to have to fight this, obviously. Um, it is greatly to our benefit to just try to run away. So remember, they will get to act first. Uh, I'm just going to deploy... Eesh. I'm going to deploy all the way back here, but I don't like it. In the river. Okay, I don't know. Our opponents have not moved forward, it seems. Well, what is the area of the battle? Okay, the area of the battle is the white outline. So, I mean, I can move to this high ground, it says, but it's saying that because I don't see any enemy units in these tiles. There is an enemy unit on one of those tiles, right? There must be. So, I'm just going to end the round. There... Either they're not moving forward or they're moving forward in a way that's very, very slow. Yeah, I think they don't want to step into the river and fight us. They did it eventually, but yeah, they that actually didn't go very well for them. Uh, I choose not to fight. I'm good. End, end the final round of the battle, please. I am considered to have won that battle because I was the defender, so... More support for me. And now... There's a unit over there somewhere. I can't quite see them. I don't know where they went. Let's let's merge up some of my units, though. For safety and also, you know, attacking people. Okay. I feel a lot more secure now. I don't quite have enough movement to pull that off, but yeah. We're definitely in a better position. Uh, so obviously, the next thing I'm going to want to do here is is produce population. Uh, shared projects. Oh, right, because we now have a religion, we can start working on a holy site, and other it's called a shared project because other cities can contribute to it. Uh, right now, we only have one city, so obviously it's not that complicated. Um, do I have the ability to build an artisan's quarter somewhere? Oh, yeah, right, I just took this over. Uh, what is that? Five stability on all cities. Hey, that's not bad. It's not, you know, not my concern right at this moment. But yeah, we're definitely going to make some archers. So I think for the moment we should be safe from attack up here. In the sense that, it, you know, I don't think they can attack us usefully. And I guess we're just going to hold on to some money. Like, do I want to pour more money into these guys? We'll get to 90 in time. I'm, I'm not I'm not in a big hurry. Because we're the only people who are currently influencing them, I'm not in a big hurry. Let's just end the turn with these resources up for the moment. I mean they're not gonna they're not gonna fight this. Oh, they did. They I guess they really, really didn't want to lose the um the war support. Uh, I am fine with this deployment, I guess. Actually, sorry. These guys should probably swap with those guys. Let's have the weakest unit be in the middle. Okay. They have engaged in cowardice. Well, let's just move the warriors forward and then do nothing else. And I'll go, I'll go stand on their flag. 
I'm assuming their unit is hiding back here somewhere. Nope, okay, they showed up. Unfortunately, we are unlikely to be able to kill them now. They've done they've done a good job of blockading us, but if they yeah, if they just don't attack us, they are going to kind of win the battle in the same way we kind of won that last battle. But they're actually paying a price for it. Like, this unit is now very badly injured, and I don't think that they have... Um, oh, no, this battle will just, will just continue? Wait, why does a battle end? Yeah, I mean, that battle's still running. Okay. I'm not clear on why sometimes a battle ends when it ends, and sometimes it doesn't. Am I, as the attacker, able to sort of call it off? Is that the deal? Huh, okay. Well, I mean, that's the best possible outcome for us, right? Because now we're going to win it, um, actually, uh, without losing any war support. All right, fortune favors you. The skies above Kerma grew darker and darker, the deluge like a sea being tipped upon a city. But then, suddenly, the clouds parted and the rains relented. Days of sunshine followed and the threat of floods are no more. Okay, cool. We managed to avoid the bad consequences through a combination of spending a small amount of money and also blind luck. Hooray. Alright, more military units coming back. More scouting being done. Let's go see what that is. Alright, so it looks like there's a whole peninsula down here that is basically just mine. Doesn't seem like anybody else has much access to it. And actually, this territory is great. Alright, Kerma, it is time. Now we could just purchase this archer right now. Do I want to do that? We are going to lose some population here, right? I'm, I'm a little leery of running too much population out of the city immediately. But also, we do, we do need to win this war. I have strong feelings about that. Let's go ahead and, and pump out one more archer, and maybe that'll be all of the archers we make for the moment. So the Assyrians have... Okay, they downgraded our trade treaty. It's not a big deal. The people of Furud converted to our... What's... Where's Furud? It zoomed out like this, as though that was helpful to me. Is this, is this region called Furud? Is that what it was trying to show me? Okay, I think so. Uh, oh, sorry, there was another one. Also... Us, us, huh? Okay, I, what am I supposed to be getting from the way this is moving? <laughs> That's probably not intended. Okay. So I think we're good for this turn, then? Alright, let's continue resolving this battle. By killing them. Hooray, a victory. Actually, that was the Kill Stuff Era Star? No, it was... Oh, the Money Era Star. Right, we got we got our first Money Star. Okay, so 521. That's moved us up to 4th. We're, we're, we're in it. We're totally still in the game. Okay, that's a more serious force. So they have two scouts, a proper warrior, and a real archer. Who actually has a higher combat strength than my archer. Huh. Well, that's a shame. Yeah, I didn't realize our archer, our special archer, had a lower combat strength than the default. That is a, that's a real bummer. All right, well, get in the river and we'll unite you with some units soon enough. I don't know that I think that our special, like our ability to fire over stuff safely is necessarily a good trade-off for a whole point of combat strength. Uh, for some reason, there's a purple guy here. So wait, is, are the purple guys now... No, they are not on the patronage meter. Well, I guess let's attack him. I mean, he'll probably just run. I would just run. But again, maybe they'll be... Okay, I was going to say, maybe they'll be too nervous about their war support. Okay, so we ran him off. How's that going, by the way? They still have 88 
got, they still have 88 up. Okay, but the, the losses from this turn have not been calculated in yet, it looks like. Okay. Well, we'll just keep pressing. I did nothing but antagonize them. I'm not I'm not surprised that this is how this has ended up. Huh. Why is this now showing Why are we showing infinite turns? Oh, because it's within the Well, it's not within the perimeter of a battlefield though. It was. I guess yeah, at the beginning of the turn it was within the perimeter of a battlefield, so. Okay, well that's a bummer, but it's fine. Uh wait. Yes, adding one person to this city does take a turn off of the next birth. I think we probably ought to do that. And then that archer will get produced soon. And maybe I should just have our scout put down a, a city over here. There's not a lot of food, unfortunately, um, but like this is a very high value territory. Then again, this area is not contentious, probably. back in get back in territory because that's a larger army and i'm not ready to fight them yet uh the archers should meet up these archers should all should also be nearby that would be a good idea you guys can press them for war for war desire okay they're just gonna they're gonna stand and fight this time they think they've got it or rather they're willing to trade this unit off in order to not not suffer uh, it is a little bit of a shame that we won't be able to get a proper flank off without putting one of our units in the river, which I extremely do not want to do. Yeah, that's actually like a, a pretty a pretty big problem. We can Provides a bonus to units defending from outside attacks unless breached by a siege weapon. Yeah, we can run our units back to the high ground, potentially. The high, the high ground and the, and the city. And just make this very awkward for them to fight. Or we can just hurl our units against them. But, like, if we get a bad damage roll, honestly, there's a pretty good chance that this just turns out to be a loss for us. So... I wasn't thinking about how bad the three-point combat strength difference was going to be. It is, though, huh? It's, it's rough. Yeah, all right. Let's just mash our units against them. We got really bad damage rolls there. We we rolled super low and they rolled super high on both of those attacks. So hopefully this gives you a good sense of what I was talking about with the um, small, small amounts of combat strength making a big difference. Like, we almost lost that battle. In, in fact, we may still have lost that battle. Despite having twice as many units as they did, because of a three-point difference. The people of Farood. So, okay, where is, what is Farood? What is this region? Well, the, okay, the city is called Kerma. This region is Gomisa. That's Farood. Okay, Farood is down here. This is, this is converting. Okay. Uh, I don't really care about that. I'm not so interested in the religion. Uh, the Olmecs, buying access to my resources. I love that very much. So, to be clear, we maintain the use of these. It's just that the Olmecs also get the bonuses from them. So this is pure upside for us. That's just a bunch of money that we got for free. Awesome. Very exciting stuff. Uh, a new grievance is available. For me and my people. Oh, they put, up a, they put up a thing on our border. They put up a, uh, what do you call it? Uh, an outpost. I will renounce this. I do not, at this moment wish to actually you know what i have 10 turns to decide i'm not going to do anything with it right now probably we will renounce that i we just don't have the the time to fight them while we're doing this thing uh farood will enter the sphere of influence of the olmex in 10 turns that's not great farood's part of my city so could you just like not do that maybe I, again, I don't exactly know how to work this system. I mean, I just need to increase my influence output, right? This territory is contributing to the hold the Olmecs have over the selected territory. It is producing four influence for them. 
yeah, we need to we need to be producing more influence. Unfortunately, I don't really have a lot of good ways to do that right now. So this will be exciting if we can figure out how to how to do this. That is a trade route. This is an administrative center that is running a trade route. Is that the Olmex purchasing my resource? Is that what that trade route is? It almost must be, right? So we could come over here and we could mess with it, but I think it would probably be counterproductive to do so. The thing is, us having discovered this does tell us that this territory is not necessarily like ours whenever we want to go take it. Because apparently this is all connected and this is an inland lake. That makes me a little nervous. Ooh, gold would be nice to have. Maybe we need to... Maybe we need to make a little bit of forward motion on this. Okay, so I don't really know what to do about that. Religious conversion's happening, and we don't really have any way of influencing that. Uh, I think we should probably just quickly grab this. And you know what? I'll just, I'll just pay for it. Just give it to me right now, and then... Uh, we don't have the ability to build anything that creates influence, so maybe that ought to be a focus for us in the in the near future. Hmm. We could build some stone rings and get our faith going, and maybe we do end up having a functional religion. Maybe we care about that. It will give us some bonuses, and if we're able to run our religion sort of over top of everybody else, we will get some benefit from that. I don't know how many more soldiers I want to build because I'm really nervous about converting population into troops. We do need population. Yeah, they got me in kind of a tough position here. I do not know what I want to do. If we were to build another... Okay, this is a district. You can only have one of in a city. Okay, so that's... That's fine. So we could build this up here and go ahead and just sacrifice the food on this tile in the long term for eight more industry and three more money per turn i mean it's not bad but we can also build districts off of um off of any outposts that we have but like as you can we we did not build these in places where it's hugely valuable to do that obviously um i guess I guess let's go ahead and, and build here. We'll just work on more Maker's Quarters. It is probably the case that I need to be less concerned about what like a theoretical, long-term, future best version of the city looks like, and just take some benefit right now. Okay, and their border has not crept forward. So we do need to go back and claim some of this stuff. It's, uh, it's all such a nightmare. We have so much stuff going on. So with this army, we probably just want to cut one of the scouts, right? And replace them with the archer. And be a, be a warrior and a scout and two archers. Okay, great. City defense researched. Okay, stuff is happening before I'm ready for stuff to be happening. Uh, yep, I know about that. Trade routes blocked. Violence has temporarily halted the selling of your obsidian. Yeah, we'll, we'll deal with it. Foreign war declared. Can I? This is not have... I don't have the ability to interact with this. Somebody has declared war on somebody. The Olmecs have gained renown as a traitor. So the Olmecs declared Greetings. war on purple? Is that what happened? You have yep. need of okay. me? Uh, I think you and I are destined to be great friends. So if we move to an alliance, the Empire's armies can regenerate and pay for repairs in each other's territories. Buy our benefits from discounted access to resources. Mm. Oh, but the seller still gets the same amount of money. Okay, I'm fine with that, actually. Armies are able to go beyond the other city's walls without penalty. Military intelligence is, fr is freely shared. I wonder if they might do it. I wonder if they might be into that. While you have this badge, your opponents earn more war support when they win battle against you. Oh, this is a cool system. So these these uh, reputations aren't just for keeping track of things. They have actual mechanical effect. Oh, yeah, that's that's very neat. Okay. Here's the thing. I need to call this episode 
or I'm just going to play for another full hour. This game is quite compelling. It's good. I like it a lot. We're going to stop here for the episode. Thank you all so much for watching. Uh, the intention here was for there to be an hour of footage every day until we get to the end of this scenario. We'll see if I'm able to stick to that. Uh, so come back next time, tomorrow, to see if we can maybe narrowly survive this war against the Hittites. And we'll see you then.